Gamecock Central Takeover Hour presented by Firehouse Subs here on the game. Tyler Head, Wes Mitchell, and Chris Clark excited now to be joined by Matt Brown of the Extra Points Newsletter to give us all the insight into what's going on with EA College Football 25. Matt, I feel like we should just shut off our microphones and let you talk for the next 15 minutes and fill us in on all the details because <laughs> you've kind of been at the forefront of this entire thing through the process of this game coming to fruition. Uh, for one, how did you kind of position yourself to be the guy when it comes to the latest on this game? Yeah, uh, to be honest, friends, it, it happened by accident. Um, I, I, write, I run a newsletter that's, that mostly covers business and policy issues in college sports. And uh, I think two and a half years ago, I was filing a bunch of open records requests to learn about how a couple of universities were, were about to launch uh, licensed beers. And it was, I thought that was going to be like a revenue story. And through that search, I got a copy of the initial project proposal for EA Sports College Football and realized, like, this is more interesting than beer. Uh, you know, fall, kind of pulled on, on that thread for open records requests for about a year until at that point, more people at EA and within the licensing industry and within the video game industry were, were more willing to talk with me. Uh, so it, it's been really rewarding and interesting. I'm, I'm a fan of the series just like everybody else, but certainly didn't expect to get into this being a video game reporter. Uh, but but glad to have added that to the portfolio of things we write about. Yeah, and here we are, Matt. I, I actually just saw, I think, an email of yours just went out uh, talking about the game. So uh, while we have you, I'm sure you'll have a lot of information coming out today in the next couple of days. You want to tell our listeners exactly how they can read up on what you're sending out? Uh, yes, yeah, so you can find the newsletter at extrapointsmb.com. Uh, I send this out four days a week. I ju the, the embargo just lifted like three minutes ago. Uh, so I sent out an email with my, my first impressions. There's free emails and there's uh, others that are behind a subscription paywall. Uh, so if you want to read the stuff that your athletic director is reading and understand how this industry works, uh, you can enjoy it at extrapointsmb.com. Yeah, so uh, if, if you are listening, you want to get the full scoop, go check that out. Uh, but, Matt, uh, we, we got you at a perfect time here, man. So you've played the game. I know you were down there. Um, what was your first impression just of the gameplay in general, maybe compared to Madden and maybe compared to the game from a decade ago? Um, I would definitely say it's, a, it's fundamentally different from Madden. Uh, which I know has been a, a major. Uh, you know, I, I got to play the new Madden game there too. It's been a major, uh, you know, c concern I think from a lot of consumers. Um, part of I mean, they are built with the same engine, but the animations are different. The physics are different. The way the some of the the features are different, and the, and the gameplay itself is different. Um, and it's also I would say fundamentally different from NCAA 14. You know, m my very early uh, imp impression was. Um, I'm going to have to relearn how to play this game a little bit, right? Because some of the kind of more cheesy ways to exploit NCAA 14 or the ways that I think we would typically play college football video games um, are not going to be as effective in this game. There's a, there's a really, I think, very different passing system where you're passing angle and pass velocity and being able to kind of layer the ball through coverage is going to be much more important than just like scrambling out of the pocket and, and rifling something across the field or, or down the field. Um, and, and there's how you play is going to be different. Like, I think there, I think a lot of people last time would say, okay, like the way to play is to, is to run an option offense, uh, or to do four verts every, every time here and who your personnel and your playbook and your, your play style and what your opponent's doing, that's going to matter a lot more. There's, I, there's, there's going to be a lot more flexibility, I think in this, in this edition. Yeah, Matt, Chris here. Thanks for joining us. Um, hopefully on defense, there's still the free fire blitz. Y'all remember that one? That was a staple of my uh, strategy, certainly on NCAA 14. But, Matt, you noted that, um, you know, obviously sev several game modes in this game. Tell us about the game mode that you were able to play and maybe, you know, anything else that you can share that you've learned about any of the modes that you did not get to play when you uh, went over to the EA headquarters? Uh, yeah, I can, I can talk a little bit about Dynasty Mode, which is, uh, I, I'm sure, a thing that a lot of people are, are going to be asking about. That's fundamentally the, the, the core mode for this game, right? Um, one of the, I think, pretty exciting things is they completely changed 
the coaching skill tree system. If you guys remember from the last game a decade ago, yep. you start out as like a level zero coach, and as, as you progress through the game, you, you almost everybody would put all their points into recruiting, right? Level that up all the way, and then maybe go into the gameplay mode. Now, when you start a coach, uh, start, start a dynasty, and you can also start your career as a coordinator, um, there's 11, I think, different skill trees, and it's impossible to max, max all of them out. Just like in real life, coaches aren't good at everything. And so one of the strategic decisions everyone's going to have to decide here is, do I want to hire coordinators and staffers that are good at some of the things that I'm not? Do I want to be a recruiting-oriented coach and then, and then hire guys that are more development-oriented or more schematic-oriented? Or do I want to double down on what I'm good at and, and maybe stack some of those multipliers, stack some of those benefits, um, and, and try to build out my, my trajectory that way? And the game will let you know, hey, these are the things you need to do to level up in – and, and scouting. These are things you need to level up in, 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 motivate, in motivation. Um, the transfer portal is definitely going to be a big part of how you build rosters. I think one of the kind of fun little wrinkles we saw was that if you're recruiting a high schooler and you, you, you're like number two in his recruitment and you, lose, and you lose him and that guy hits the portal the next year, mm-hmm. you're going to have a leg up in recruiting him out of the portal. And so accurate. if you're taking over a, G, a G5 team, yeah, <laughs> um, that's going to be one of the, I think, better ways to, to maybe stack talent. The game is definitely set up where you can't win the Sun Belt in year one and then sign seven five-star kids out of high school. <laughs> you can eventually do that as, as your program changes, but like I, you know, that, you're always going to cheese the AI a little bit in the last game, and that's not going to be the case here. But you might be able to get some of those three- and four-star guys out of the transfer portal. There will be, there'll be lots of different, uh, I think, roster management pathways as you build your team. Uh, again, talking to Matt Browns from the Extra Points uh, newsletter on the latest on the EA Sports College Football 25 video game. So you're telling me I can't turn Kennesaw State into a national power overnight in dynasty mode? Uh, yes. You, 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 you can definitely turn Kennesaw State into a superpower in like seven years. Um, and you can win all your games in the first year, but you're not going to be able to build Alabama's roster in year one. That seems reasonable. Uh, one, one thing that always set college football video games apart from Madden was the customization. You could go into Dynasty yeah. mode, you could change your conferences around, you could change the BCS bowl tie-ins, you could do team builder or rosters, change all that kind of stuff. What can you tell us about customization in this new game? Well, it's, it's, I think it's customization is going to be some pluses and minuses. You know, on the plus side, uh, their team builder is back. Um, I, I, the, that's going to be done on the, on the PC um, it's we have we didn't get a ton of details on that, but you know the early word is that it's going to be a little bit more robust than it was last year. Uh, so you, you can import you know custom created teams and, and download other people's teams, uh, put them into your dynasty. You can do custom uh, custom conferences. You can add teams. You can subtract teams. Uh, one of the things that I, I kind of liked that I don't think you could do before is you can also change conference rules. So if you're playing a dynasty in the SEC and you decide, okay, uh, I want there to be nine conference games. Now you can. Uh, if you want to say, oh, we want to have eight conference games, but I want my new protected rival to be Vanderbilt, you can do that, which is going to change comp- you know, schedules uh, moving forward. The one place for customization I think is going to take a little bit of a step back is with the uh, custom creating recruits and, and altering the existing rosters. Uh, now that these rosters are full of real people who have signed real licensing <laughs> agreements uh, that need to be honored, uh, you're not going to be able to hop into the game and make like a March Manning, <laughs> who just happens to look like Arch Manning. You, there's going to be some player customization in 2014 that you're not going to have this year as EA works to try to build systems that are legally compliant. I think even the history of this game, that's understandable. For sure. Uh, Matt, uh, I imagine – Getting in, getting in there and playing with South Carolina was not your, your first order of duty when you got down there. But um, since we are a South Carolina show, is there anything you can tell us or anything that you remember specifically about the Gamecocks that either you saw with your own eyes or just you've picked up along the way that maybe our listeners would, would enjoy hearing? No, I, I know it's, it's a good question, and, and it's true. I, I, I played – with I, I think I think not, I, at nine different teams when I was mm-hmm. there because you know I was I was stopping the game at halftime so I go fire something else up and South Carolina was not one of them, and uh, I was not able to file open records requests to get their submitted yeah. audio assets because I do not live in South Carolina and I believe uh, the school's multimedia rights partner handled a lot of that for them. Um, I believe believe Cocky the mascots in the game, uh, but for other you know more specific things I didn't see it. Uh, I will say though from all the other schools that I saw, which included big schools and small schools. The attention to detail 
for stadiums and in-game presentation is insane. Um, you will be able to see not just, okay, this is the music we play uh, coming into the game, and this is the inside of our locker room, and here's uh, the sound effect we play on, during, on penalties uh, and, and, on, but, and on third downs. You'll be able to see, like, where in the stadium they put the opposing team's band, where the, on the sidelines each cheerleading squad is. Like, the, 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 you know, they mapped out every seat in the stadium. Like, that level of granular detail really pops. Man, I know you got another interview here shortly, but real quick, uh, how, how much do you think that just having a not just a year because, you know, you're generally a football game, you're talking about a year to year thing. You you have time yeah. uh, crunches, but actually having a few years to put to just kind of build this game from scratch in a lot of ways. Um, it, it sounds like the fact they were able to do that was kind of apparent in the level of attention to detail that you were able to see. I don't think there was a way that they would have been able to release anything like what you're going to see this July without waiting an extra year. And that's, mm -hmm. you know, that's something that's going to be apparent in the story that came out today. It's going to be apparent in the story tomorrow and m much of my other coverage here from this event. Um, I, I think it's fair to look at this game as a foundational piece in the development. Not every single thing that EA Sports wanted to put in the game is going to be in this game. Uh, probably not every single little thing that fans want. A lot of them are. But a major part of the last two years was building the infrastructure, modernizing this game, and building a solid base. So then there are things that you can add on to it in subsequent releases that don't break the fundamental structure of the game. You know, for, for football games year to year, that's a real short development window, and you really only get one shot at a first impression and one shot to make sure the foundation of the game is working. And that's what they, they meant to do here. Well, I can tell you we're all very excited for this game to finally come out, already setting aside the money to buy a new PS5 and, and the game as well. We appreciate your time, Matt. Know you got to run, and we'll, uh, we might be checking in with you again later down the line as we get closer and closer to that release date. Nope, you bet. All right, thanks for having me, guys. Again, Matt Brown from the Extra Points newsletter, staying on top of all things with the A Sports College Football 25. Did you have something to add, Wes? No? no. Got, got all the information you needed. Yeah, I think we, we packed a lot of info there in, in 15 minutes. Yep. And uh, I figured he wasn't playing with South Carolina, but I had to ask. Probably not. But uh, in South Carolina, only briefly got featured in the uh, the trailer. I believe it was Oscar Delp putting somebody on skates. And that was that was the extent of Gamecocks in that trailer. Yeah, of course, a Georgia fan would bring that up. <laughs> well, you know, sometimes I got to get my leverage. So can, can um, we, we, Wes will get revenge on behalf of the Gamecocks. I'm, when sure, he he Tyler. I'm right. sure he will. Can we get a sound effect for my one <laughs> Tyler's a Georgia fan you know mention what? each week? <laughs> Maybe we can get that segment sponsored. How about that? That sounds good. Yeah, we, we can do that. All right, we'll uh, shift gears, go on to baseball. Coach Kingston talking on the cocktail hour with uh, Jay and Bill a little bit yesterday on the upcoming regional this weekend with Raleigh. We'll hit that coming up next. It is Gamecock Central Takeover Hour presented by Firehouse Subs here on the game. That daughter just.